Thank you for coming out and sharing uh, this pivotal uh, moment for us in the history of Carson College, and especially the history of the development of the North County campus. Um, you know, we've had such an incredible history and an interesting history in the North County from 1965 when we were offering classes in Paso Robles High School, Tascadero, Shandon, Tascadero State Hospital, to the, uh, the challenge of Prop 13 when that hit in 1978 and we, uh, we drew back and thought about what are we gonna do to do a better job of servicing students and we decided to launch a center concept and it was that same time that Templeton High School, the current high school was being built and it was right on the highway, really accessible and it was politically neutral between the Tascadero and the Paso <laughs> uh, And so we developed a concept there. So we offered more than just classes. We offered counseling services and support services. Um, but like any small community, the high school is really the only show in town. So suddenly we're up against competing with bingo and other kinds of community events. So meanwhile, I was watching the development that was happening in Paso Robles and that was the building of the current high school over on the east side, and all that development was happening. But the, but the ability to get from 101 over to the east side was somewhat challenging, unless you knew where the 13th bridge, Street Bridge was. Um, you could ride along River Road forever, you know, not find anything. Uh, but when the, uh, the Niblick Bridge Project was completed in 1987, then I talked to uh, Greg Welch, who was the assistant principal at the time at Pastor Wolf High School, and said, you know, is there a possibility that we can move our center to Pastor Wolf High School? And so we did that in the late 80s. Uh, and we were there for about 10 years uh, before the, uh, the magic development of the Buena Vista property, uh, which uh, <coughs> was a wonderful find. We had a wonderful partnership with the Dallins family and so many other uh, major players in the North County who stepped forward to say, yes, it's our time. It's time to do something here special in Paso Robles. And I remember uh, the groundbreaking uh, we had here on Buena Vista, which was a dirt road. There wasn't a stick of building around. And it was raining and we, our tent was blowing and kind of reminded me of the groundbreaking of the instructional building on the San Luis campus a couple of years ago. Um, but little did we know it was the birth of something very special. And um, having, having been at, at Cuesta College in the, in the early days in 1967, it had that same feel again, that same, let's do it, let's build something very special. Uh, thanks to Pete Sizak's efforts, we got modular buildings from Vanderbilt Air Force Base as surplus and brought them up here. And, foundation stepped forward and did an amazing capital campaign with the support of the North County people and raised money to refurbish the buildings and get them ready for the fall of 1998. And there was born uh, the North County campus. Uh, primitive, pioneering, but it had a special feel. You know, everybody didn't care about what their job description said, they just pitched it and did it. And that was what I remember back in 1967. It was that kind of atmosphere. And, and so some people said, oh, we don't want to get rid of the modulars. We love the quaintness and so on. You know, but, yeah. yeah, it was like early question. We had a lot of Vietnam vets coming back out of the military. No, we like the Quonset huts. You know, we want this. And it was flexible. If you wanted to expand space, you just dragged a building up and <laughs> nailed it to the next one. And, uh, it, was, uh, it was very, very special. Um, but in terms of an environment for teaching and learning and serving students, what we have today is really, really special. And uh, there have been so many people that have played such major roles in the development of that. that uh, you know, now we have an anchor on the north side of the campus in this beautiful building with the learning center on the Schwartz building anchoring the, the southern end of the campus. Uh, so now we have a defining moment. And I hope when you drove up, if you came up Buena Vista, the first thing you see is this building. And that's what we were hoping, is that this would become the pivotal part of where do I begin? Oh, it must be that big building over there. You know, and uh, so that's uh, really what we hope.
uh, to see. So I hope you have um, a, a good afternoon, and uh, I know some of you have already been wandering around the building because it's so damn hot out here. You know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it, we'll have some guided tours so you know exactly what you're looking at when you go inside. So anyway, at this time, um, I'd like to uh, introduce a very special player in all of this, a longest serving board member that's currently serving now in her 18th year. This is her fifth term serving the North County, and that's Angela Mitchell. Angela, wow. please. Welcome everybody. I'm glad everyone can make it today. And I'm going to be really quick. And they've got a nice tree back there. Um, I would like to say on behalf of the Board of Trustees that we're very thankful that there was a great collaboration that happened on this project to make it go forward. Not only is this a state-of-the-art building with a magnitude of resources under its roof, it's a gift of confidence to the students in the North County and well, the other campuses as well. And then the building is a permanent reminder of the continuing promise of this campus and will always be a placeholder in the minds as the building that we brought us, the building that brought us one step closer to our future shining campus. We have created permanency um, through replacing modular buildings with stable and secure and state-of-the-art infrastructure. This is the first major project to come out of Measure L on the North County campus, and we're delighted to share it with you today. I'm trying to look for people right now while I'm talking. Um, <laughs> the building would not have been possible without the work of the Citizens Oversight Committee, including committee chair Scott Lathrop and co-chair Susan Dressler. Are you guys here? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then the rest of the committee members of the Oversight, on the the oversight Committee, if you guys can stand up and be recognized, that would be great. We couldn't do it without you. Oh, there's Susan. Hi, yes, thank you. And I would also like to acknowledge the teams who made this vision a reality. Terry Reese, Woo! I didn't see you. Where are you? I saw your wife. She's beautiful. Oh, Terry, you're way back there. And Brian McAllister is standing back there also. And all of the facilities team members involved in this, as well as Keith Stearns and all of the IT department, the Information Technology Department team. Are you guys, where are you guys right at? Here. to chase a moving target, so he has to be right on it to make sure that everything does stay state-of-the-art, and he's done a fantastic job. And then lastly, and certainly not least, I would like to acknowledge the members of the architectural team, the construction management group, the program management team that worked so hard to carry this dream into fruition. Well, the representatives from PMS and Block and Kitchell, please stand up. On behalf of the entire board, you guys stand up, please. Pete Sizek, Barbara George, Mary Strobridge, and Pat Mullen. Oh, and Jordan, Jason Jordan's here. There you go, Jordan, our student trustee in the back. And he's in his second term, so we're very glad to have him on board for his second term. So thank you all for coming today. And Gil has got a little more for you. <laughs> There's always a little more in the tank. Yeah. Some of these are going to blow away, they'll go shorter. Yeah. So, um, I talked about the, uh, the beginning of this particular site. And that's why today is such a, uh, a celebration of watching the umbrellas fly away. <laughs> but you know, it's no matter what kind of buildings you build, or grounds that you have, parking lots or shade, it's all about the people. It's ser people serving people. And when I talk to parents who are coming onto our campus, uh, looking at the potential of what, sending their son or daughter to Cuesta College, um, I talk to them about what a beautiful college we have. You know, it's a park-like environment. It's the, the grounds are kept. We don't have graffiti. We don't have a lot of vandalism. I said, but we do it every other college do. We offer math and English and so on. I said, so what makes Cuesta College unique from the other community colleges? I said, it's the people. 
And so I challenge them. I say, you know, when you walk around campus and you start to talk to faculty or uh, employees within student services and admissions and records and so on, I said, measure how you are being treated. You know, do they go out of their way in order to take care of you? Do they notice a bewildered look on your face and, and jump forward to say, can I help you? That's what distinguishes Costa College from other colleges. And so I, I set the pump, I set the, you know, prime the pump for them to really take a look at us. And, and I really believe it in my heart that that's what makes us unique. And that's what makes this campus so unique. Because we haven't had all the whistles and bells up here, it's really the nurturing of the staff and faculty of our students who choose to come here that makes the difference. And what a reward for those students now who are choosing to come here is to be coming to a first class, modern, um, state of the art college campus. And with the uh, second year of the Promise program now launched, you know, we just, uh, we, uh, we hope that families uh, throughout San Luis County will say, you know, this is something for us. This is the promise that the college has made for us in perpetuity, for families after families after families. And you know, we're not done with this campus. You know, we still have two more buildings that are in the Measure L that are gonna be uh, built on this campus. And by then we'll be launching another bond campaign. So don't, you know, just be ready to vote again. You know? <laughs> So as I said before, I, I do remember my start in the barracks at Camp San Luis. Uh, you know, and I said before, it was the feeling of, of creating something out of nothing. Uh, and I remember in 1971, when we built the very first permanent building on the San Luis Obispo campus. And it was the uh, physical education shower and locker room, because that was the most needy facility that we had. And of course, it resonated with me because I was a football coach. And, um, and we had to have some place other than the former uh, latrines over there on the barracks, you know, to, for our student athletes to, uh, to find a home. And then I remember the Science Center opened in 1973. And suddenly we had a very modern, up-to-date uh, facility that students could take biological sciences and physical sciences. We had an observatory, which was the state of the art at the time. And I remember on every, every lab desk in the physics lab was the, the newest and greatest technology, the HP 45 calculator, <laughs> which was cabled to the table to prevent theft. Now, if you remember the technology in that, today you get it a, a cereal box as a prize, you know. So. And they were like $450 for that particular technology. And, 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 we had, and we moved from that temporary to permanent mentality, just as we're doing here in the last in several years, from 2010. Uh, moving from temporary to permanent. And with that comes a commitment by the district to create permanency uh, in this North County. So the, the ribbon cutting, um, it's not just an opportunity to bring people together and, and visit and reconnect and have some refreshments and so on. It's really uh, a commitment by all of us that uh, we believe in this. You wouldn't be here if you didn't believe in what this building represents. It is not a Taj Mahal, even though it's pretty grand. When you walk in that door and you see that staircase, you know, is this the highway to heaven? You know. Uh, but it feels wonderful, and that's what we hope that our students will feel. Welcoming and a pathway to success. And I do want to, again, uh, echo what Trustee uh, Mitchell did, and that's to thank the, the Board of Trustees. You know, I've had a, a unique and great pleasure of working with uh, a board. It, it's the most unique board in California. And that is because we have former employees and alumni, people whose heart and soul have been committed to Cuesta College. We don't get people running for our board 
who are looking for political stepping stones or they have an axe to grind. They have people who care. And I'm forever grateful uh, for that opportunity to be able to work with people who are as passionate as I am about this college. And they have now made a really good decision about bringing on Dr. Jill Stearns, who is equally passionate about whatever endeavor she's involved in, whether it's been West Hills College or Modesto Junior College, you know, she will quickly uh, sink her heart and soul into the connection with the culture and the history of Cuesta College. The generosity of the North County people has been uh, incredible. From the very beginning, uh, in the uh, late 80s, uh, and the campaign to, to build Cuesta College, temporary campus, and it continues today. You know, we wouldn't have the Dale and Mary Schwartz building if the Schwartz family hadn't continued to be that, that wonderful giver. We wouldn't have Dallin's Hall. We wouldn't have Dallin's Road. We wouldn't have Dallin's all over the place, you know? <laughs> if it hadn't been, you know, John and Burma who were really uh, there when we needed them, buying the property for us and holding it interest-free until we could come up with money have enough garage sales in order to be able to pay them back. Um, and the list goes on and on and on. The Laura Coates, the Roy Coates, the Tom Schultz. You walk into the Learning Resource Center, it's the Roy Coates Library. We wouldn't have been able to launch the second year of the Promise program if we would not had a wonderful gift from the Laura Coates state. So Tom, thank you for that. We appreciate it. <laughs> and like many things in public life and public education, we can't do it alone. You know, and, and that's why uh, our foundation is so important. You know, the, the, the legacy that Dr. George left and she left the foundation, which launched it into a premier operation. And what we've been able to continue to build on with Shannon Hill as the executive director to make it one of the top five foundations in California. It is unique. It is unique uh, in the fact that it can sustain programs like the Promise Program. You know, most colleges that have Promise programs, it's a pay-as-you-go. So they're constantly, every year, fundraising. And sometimes they can offer the promise to all the students, and sometimes first come, first serve, and I never want to see that happen. I want you as a family, or you as a grandparent of the family, I want you to rest assured that your sons and daughters, your grandchildren, if they choose to come to Cuesta, they have a place here for two years. So, and you're here for a reason, and I want to thank you for that. And also, I'd like to, uh, at this time, invite a representative or elected elect officials who are present today to come forward. And I know that uh, Kristen Hanley is here representing Assembly Jordan Cunningham. Vicki Jansen is here on behalf of Supervisor John Pichon. And I saw Erica Reyes, who is here uh, representing uh, Congressman Salud uh, Carvajal. So thank you very much for joining us. And of Jordan Cunningham's office, thank you for allowing us to participate in this today. Um, we have a special certificate of res recognition. Um, it's a resolution honoring Cuesta College in the grand opening of the North County College Campus Center. And I'll just read the last two lines. It says, whereas Cuesta College North County Campus Center represents the culmination of several years of planning and hard work involving many departments and individuals, it is also one example of keeping Cuesta College's promise to the residents of San Luis Obispo County to ensure their local tax dollars went to improving their community college. Now, therefore, let it be resolved that Assemblymember Jordan Cunningham does hereby congratulate Cuesta College on the grand opening of the North County Campus Center.
Hey, um, I'm Vicki Jansen from Supervisor Pashan's office, and um, I'm excited to be here today because it's not often you get to complete the circle. I got to be here for the groundbreaking in 2016, and the weather is definitely different today. Um, I have a little pool of sweat in my shoes, I noticed when I got up to walk. Um, I, on I got to be here on behalf of Supervisor, or Assemblyman Ashajian in 2016. Today I'm here on behalf of Supervisor Pishon, so it's, it's neat to be able to represent both of those folks here today. Um, I think Quest has been doing a truly a wonderful job of keeping their promise to the community and using um, Measure L funds to enhance both campuses with the new facility, so congratulations on that. So on behalf of the Board of Supervisors, I'd like to present the certificate to Cuesta College um, uh, with congratulations on opening the new uh, the new North County Campus Center. Good afternoon, everyone. I know I stand between you and the air conditioning as well as touring this beautiful building, so I will keep it brief. Um, I'm here on behalf of Congressman Salute Carbajal and just want to recognize that this is really the the legacy that Dr. Stork has built, this building itself stands as that and will remain for all of our, the community here, not only our students, but also um, our elderly community that's going in and doing enrichment courses and will really stand as a firm legacy um, for years to come. So I am sans my certificate today, but it is coming, I assure you, and um, thank you so much. Hey, Erica, I only have nine days left, so you better get in the mail. <laughs> you can drop it by my house. <laughs> so this is a, leads us to the special moment uh, where we have the opportunity to officially uh, launch this building with our ribbon cutting.